Homeschooling is having more than a moment. During the pandemic, the number of kids being homeschooled jumped as many parents and guardians took on the role of educator. But now that schools are back in session, many have decided to not return. I keep saying many, I'm not actually giving you a specific number, because the United States as a whole doesn't track homeschooled kids. In fact, nearly a dozen states don't require any sort of notice or monitoring when a family decides to educate their kid at home. Our correspondent Dan Lieberman traveled to one of those states, Michigan, to see how an apparent rise in homeschooling there has sparked a debate about whether more oversight is needed. I never planned to be a homeschool mom. That was never on my agenda. Fed up with the school system in Detroit, Amy Dickerson pulled her son Aiden out of school entirely when he entered the third grade. The pandemic allowed me to be able to actually watch him throughout the course of the day and see how he would really struggle. And I kind of figured out he might have ADHD. I said, you know what? If I continue to put him into the school system, I'm actually just setting him up for failure. Dickerson is one of many parents in Detroit and around the nation who is choosing to homeschool their children. You guys have in front of you this sheet of paper. You Amy and her son are part of Engage Detroit, a nonprofit learning center that serves homeschool families. How did he adjust to being homeschooled? He told me early on, I like being at home better because it's less distracting. He enjoys the fact that we can do our work in different ways and not just simply sit at a desk, you know. We can go outside and, and do work, which helps with the focus. So that he really enjoys it. Engaged Detroit's enrollment has increased dramatically with nearly eight times the amount of students they had in 2020. There's no doubt that more families are homeschooling today than they were in the past. Heath Brown is the author of the book, Homeschooling the Right. Some of this has to do with the pandemic, but there were trends that preceded the pandemic. It's much easier for families today to access online curriculum, textbook material uh, than it ever was in the past. I was allowed to play piano. It was like my one outlet. For Samantha Field, who grew up in a religious household, being homeschooled was not a positive experience. My education stopped in eighth grade and there was no boundaries or systems in place to prevent that kind of thing from happening. I went over to this new friend's house and she had her math textbook open on her bed from school. And I had never seen a public school textbook before and I didn't understand it and couldn't do it even if I tried. Field now works for a nonprofit founded by homeschool alumni that advocates for regulation of homeschooling. No one could really speak to the experience of the homeschooled child, but we could because we'd been homeschooled children. Can't think of a single subject my mom was qualified to teach. Many of my peers are very thankful to their homeschool education, but they also can see people like me and say, that shouldn't happen. Michigan is one of 11 states that does not require homeschool children to be counted or registered. For a long time, one of the defining characteristics of homeschooling uh, has been this aversion uh, to oversight, uh, a feeling on the part of many homeschool families that it is their right to educate their kids in their home and that anything that might uh, intervene in that is, is an abridgment of their rights. Several instances of abuse by homeschool parents has led Michigan's attorney general and other lawmakers to call for increased oversight. The legal loophole is massive and it's exploited by people who know that their child coming in contact with mandatory reporters is the primary threat to them continuing their abuse. And that's not a judgment on homeschool families, it's a judgment on homeschool law. But not everyone agrees that lax homeschool regulation is the problem. Fix the system that you have first. Those things have been occurring in that same system since I was going to school. You're doing a great job with Aiden, but what about parents out there who are homeschooling who might not be able to do such a good job? Who are those parents? <laughs> who are those parents? We are people who, again, are doing this because we feel the need to see our children succeed at their best. So we're not getting into this to hide our children from the system. This is a sacrifice you make in order to have the life that you want, and this is what I want. What do you say to a lot of the new homeschool parents who see public schools as failing their kids? 
I would encourage them to always view it through the lens of their child. I think it should be an ongoing conversation and children should be experiencing assessments to judge whether or not their needs are being met. For matter of fact, I'm Dan Lieberman in Michigan.